imagine if you could talk to the jury and even watch the jury deliberating, arguing with each other about that blood sample and whether it was authentic, and then go try your case. Well, you can. And the way to do it is with a mock trial. We have actual people who could be on our real jury, and we go through some polling. So they all answer these questions. At the end of the case, we get back a report that contains an analysis. Here are your better jurors. Jurors with this income group were generally on the other side. Jurors in this group were with you. The way the process then works is the plaintiff's presentation is made. And you know how when you're watching the political debates, you see that the folks who are being observed push numbers one, two, three, or one, three, or five, whatever it may be. And what they're saying is, do I like the arguments that I'm hearing? Do I like the debate that I'm hearing? That's the way we do these things, at least with Magna. And what you're seeing now is these mock jurors are constantly hitting their keypads. One means I don't like the presentation, I don't like the argument, three is neutral, five is helpful. So now afterwards, I can go back and correlate and say, well here, so many minutes into this, I was making the argument about theory of liability A. If I see a dip, I know the jury doesn't like that theory. I'm gonna watch them deliberate later, but I already know just from this what theories they like and don't like. Then what we do next is, go to the next slide, Dylan. Then we vote. Um, these are the questions that they have, and those are the results. So after the plaintiff's presentation only, 58% were strongly with the plaintiff, 38% somewhat with the plaintiff, and nobody somewhat with the defense, one strong defense person. We then go through defense presentations. In this case, there are two defendants. We go through their presentation, and then they vote again. This was an unusually strong case, by the way. This wasn't sort of a typical case. Um, but what you see is you can tell not only that two of the mock jurors went from strongly in favor to somewhat in favor, but we can go back and, and look at which ones those jurors were. One of the things we wanted to do with this case is help to show the defense how strong it is. So we let the jury deliberate. We're watching them deliberate. Two different juries. We split them in half. And what we end up with is a verdict sheet. And that's the first page of the verdict sheet where both defendants were found to be negligent, causally negligent, 50-50. And the second half is the damages award. I told you this was a strong case, stronger than most. So the numbers add up to a $50 million verdict. We always use these things to test issues. We ordinarily use them to test issues. In this case, I'm actually putting together a settlement brochure on DVD. It will be a presentation highlighting the testimony, highlighting the documents, all the evidence, integrating a day in the life. And then after that, we're actually going to show the defense not just the verdict, but the deliberations. And we're going to show them, here is your fantasy juror. Here's that one who was strongly with the defense. Let them hear that their arguments were made that these numbers are too high, that the jury should believe that a particular test was done even though the defense can't show it was done when they admit it should have been done. And then we're gonna let the defense see how real Albany County people who heard real evidence shot down those arguments that they didn't believe.